Uh, so, guys, uh, just uh, wanted to find out if you had a chance to uh, go over the script this weekend. Yes. Memorized it, internalized it, mastered it, made it your own. I don't know if I mastered it, but working yes. on the memorization. But yeah. Okay. All right. So who wants to who wants to go first? I mean, today is your turn. Okay. You guys are going to be role playing. All right. And uh, hopefully we can get this done in the next 20, 25 minutes. Who wants to go first? Who wants to go second? Um, you know, and, and just pick, uh, pick a partner, uh, pick somebody that uh, you guys worked with last week and do the role play. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> Crickets. All right, guys. If, if I guess you, I'll volunteer. Uh, there you go, Parker. So, so Parker, uh, let's go with Parker. Parker's going to go first because he was the first one who logged in. Um, and <laughs> that's that's Dang that's, that's going to bite me in the butt. <laughs> that's what, I'll do that's it with you, Parker. Happens. Come on, let's go. That's what happens. Hey, Parker, that's what happens when you're on time, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and then, Parker, who was your AP for, uh, for, for this week? Who's your AP? Sam or Samantha, sorry. Do you Samantha. prefer Sam or Samantha? You can call me Sam. Sam's okay. Yeah. Is is it Sam, Samantha, or Sammy? It's all of the above, but usually so, Sam. Yeah. Sam. Okay, Sam. Okay, awesome. Sam. All right, good. All right, so let's let's do it. So who's going to be the 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 agent, and who's going to be the uh, the pesky uh, buyer lead? Parker, you can be the agent if you want. <laughs> I had a feeling that was coming. <laughs> Uh, all right, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Now, Parker, you got to imagine Sam is like, a, uh, well, in Prescott, the average price point right now is around seven, seven fifty. She's an eight hundred thousand dollar buyer right now. Okay. That, that means Parker. That means for you, that's a, a twenty thousand dollar commission check. Yes. What can you do with twenty thousand dollars, Parker? Uh, get. A fifth of the way to being debt free. Amen. All right, that's that's a lot. Okay, I didn't know that you had so much debt, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> college, college, the dreaded college. That's okay. the kicker. That's it. That's it. Um, all right, so let's start. Okay, let me pull the script back up on my side. Oh, <laughs> you're not going to read it though, right? That's cheating. That's cheating. <laughs> I removed it. So this way. <laughs> What? That's cheating. You're not going to be reading a script. Anybody can read a script. Well, I told you I was working on the memorization part. Just do your best. Do your best. Okay. Do, do your Man, best. we're really tough on it today. I, I, I know <laughs> this is what it. I get for being first. That's it. I know you've done it before, so you know, yeah. it's not for you. Come on, let's go. All right, so ring, ring, ring. Hello, this is Sam. Hi, Sam. This is Parker with Best Homes Real Estate. I just wanted to reach out to you real quick, say thanks for reaching out on our website, joining the Facebook ads. Um, I've noticed you were looking at a couple of houses, a couple of properties in the Prescott, Prescott Valley area. Um, is this where you're interested in buying? Is it particular to one city or the other? Um, I'm not really familiar with the area. I know that quite a few people from in California and I live in California right now. So they're, this is why I was looking in this area. So I'm not really familiar with the area. Okay. We've got a lot of people from California moving here and everybody seems to absolutely love it. Um, one of the greatest things about this area, we've got all four seasons. I mean, today it is absolutely coming down with snow and that's like the once every three years. Don't worry. That's not every day. Um, so what about the area seems to be the draw? What about it sounds good to you? Um, I just like the fact that it's kind of a smaller town. I'm from LA, so I'm looking to move to a smaller area. Okay, um, looking to get a little bit more of that family feeling in a town, right? I am. I have two kids. Oh, perfect. Okay. So Prescott is absolutely gorgeous. Um, are you and your kids hikers at all? They are. We love to hike. Okay. So I'm from Michigan where you can't be in the outside very much during the winter time, but out here you can hike pretty much year round other than days like today, unless you're really brave. Um, 
but it's absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorite trails that I highly recommend if you ever come out here just to take a look and visit while you have time is the Thumb Butte Trail. It's not long, it's not hard. You and your kids would love it and it gives you a complete 360 view of the city. Great, that sounds awesome. We're gonna we're actually yeah. coming up to visit in a couple months so we'll have to go check that out. Oh, perfect. Okay, so let me ask you a quick question. What are the must-haves that you wanna have in your house? What are the bedrooms, bath, square footage? What's your dream? Um, I think I would like a three bedroom, at least a three bedroom, but preferably a four. I could have an office in there. I would like three bathrooms, a uh, three car garage. Those are probably the major things that I, I want. Okay. And one thing we see a lot up here, we have a lot of three car garages, but we also have a lot of three car tandems. Is that an option or do you want strictly the three stalls? Yeah, I would definitely look at that. Okay. And your budget's right around the 800000 mark? It is, that's correct, yes. Okay. Do you think I should be able to find something with all of those things in that, in that area? I definitely think you could. We've got a lot of really great houses on the market right now. We're just going to have to narrow it down to the right one for you. Do you want a yard with it? Do you want land with it? Or is it just the house that's important because there's a lot of outdoor activities anyways? I want a, a little bit of land too. I'm from California, so we, we don't really have a lot of land out here. So probably like an acre if I could, it'd be awesome. It'd be a plus. Okay. There are a couple of properties that are going to be about an acre to two acres. They'll be right about top of your budget as a guesstimate. But up in Williamson Valley, there's a lot of really great properties up there. Um, that's more like ranch style houses. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Perfect. And that's right at the base of Bear Mountain or Granite Mountain. We're going to have to check it out when we get there. Like I've never, I've never really been to Prescott, but I've heard great things. Okay. And then, so you said you're coming out in about a month, right? Yes. Okay. And then how long do you think until you're ready to, ready to move? Um, I kind of want to move as soon as possible. Right now my house is listed. And so I'm just waiting for the sale of that. And then, and I work remotely. Oh, perfect. So you're extremely flexible with that. I am. Okay. So then let me ask this because it sounds like we're going to jump on a house as soon as we find the right one for you. Have you already spoken to a lender to talk about pre-qualifications or have you decided to pay cash for the house? What avenue do you want to pursue with that? Um, I think I'm going to need, I'm waiting on the sale of my house. So I have to wait and see until that happens. And then once that happens, then I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay, perfect. So if you decide to start a conversation with the lender, I have a lot of really awesome local partners that I've worked with in the past. I'd be happy to introduce you to them. What I'll do is I'll send you an email with their contact information. That way, if your house sells and you decide you want to talk to the lender, you have their information ready to go. In the meantime, I'm going to pull up a couple of houses and send them over to you, get your opinion on them. Um, and in, until you come out, how does a virtual showing sound if you really love something and want to at least get a feel for the walkthrough? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. All right. Well, perfect, Sam. I'm going to go ahead and get these properties emailed over to you. Let me make sure I have a good email address for you. What is the best one to reach you at? Um, go ahead and it's sraftop2 at gmail.com. Perfect. All right. Well, all of my contact information is going to be at the bottom of the email. It's got my name, phone number, email address, everything you're ever going to need to get in touch with me. If you have any questions at any point, give me a call, shoot me an email, shoot me a text. I've got my phone on me literally 24 um, seven, preferably, you know, don't contact me at midnight, but um, I'll get these properties emailed out to you and we'll be in touch. Sounds great. Thank you, Parker. Absolutely. Have a good one. You do the same. Bye. Bye. That was that was awful. That was awful. <laughs> I thought I was okay. Alex, come on. Now that was great, man. That was great. I mean, you did a really, really good. I mean, you were natural. Your questions were free flowing. You were asking her the right questions, open ended questions. You, you, I, 
you, you identified her, um, I mean, her motivation, uh, her time frame, um, what she's looking for, <clears throat> price point. You try to find a commonality with hiking. I mean, you're, I mean, I mean, you hit that thing out of the ballpark, man. Thank you. Good work. Good work. And then at the end of it, I mean, the fact that she was uh, out of state and she was not local, you said, hey, you know what? You know, virtual showings, I'm game. You know, let I me like know that something that you yeah. like. I'll be out there <laughs> showing you those homes virtually. If COVID has taught Marge and I anything, it's how to do a virtual showing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, virtual showings. And I mean, that brings that brings value, right? That brings value because pictures is one thing, but actually seeing the video, it's a different, different animal, right? And the fact that you're there and and offering them a service for free without even meeting them, without even knowing them, that's the law of reciprocity. You do something nice to them, in return, they're gonna feel like they have to do something nice to you. Yeah. Which means that their commitment, their loyalty to you to work with you and, and give you their business. Yeah. Well, and Sam, I got to say, you made this one easy on me. So thank you. I mean, the, the, today is the easy part, right? I mean, that, but we're going to be start starting on, on, on Wednesday and then continuing on Friday into next week. We're going to start, you know, um, uh, throwing some of the, the most common objections. Okay. All right. Okay. Good work, Parker. All right. Let's continue. Who's going to go next? <clears throat> All right, all right. Let, let, let's let's go. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go with uh, with Kelly. Kelly, who is your AP? Angela. Angela. All right. So, um, who wants to be the agent and who wants to be the buyer? I'll be the buyer. So you're the buyer. Angela is the the agent. Okay, let's do it. Angela, you got the mic. Sorry, I started talking without, I was like wondering why she wasn't saying anything. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, okay, so ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, um, this is Angela with uh, Best Homes Real Estate and um, I was looking for Kelly. Yes, this is Kelly. Awesome, hey Kelly. Um, I just wanted to thank you for joining our website. Um, I saw you were on there earlier today and um, you were checking out a property. And so I was just wondering um, if I could help you with your home search at all today. Which website? I, I, I joined like five today. Oh my gosh. Okay. So it's best homes. Uh, oh, sorry. What is it? Valleyhomesearch.com. <laughs> oh, okay. That one. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw a uh, you know, I don't know the property address that you're interested in. Um, so would you want to go um, to look at this property at all? Um, yeah, I liked um, 1234 East Elm Street. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I saw that one was in Surprise. Um, is that particularly where you're looking? Like, um, you know, where do you want to be at? Um, yeah, Surprise is okay. Um, Peoria, um, you know, the, the West Valley places. So I guess I need to look on the West side of town. Okay. All right. Um, so when are you looking, um, to make a move? Um, oh, probably in six months. <clears throat> oh, okay. Well, let's get your home search dialed in and that way, um, you can be more efficient with, um, Picking out what's out there on the market today. Um, so is it okay if I like um, ask you a couple questions about more specifically what you're looking for? Um, so yes. Get that dialed in for you? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So um, how many bedrooms and bathrooms are you looking for? I want a four bedroom, two bath with a pool. Okay. Oh, the pool. Nice. <laughs> That's great. Um, do you have kids? And um, yes, but they're grown. Oh, okay. That's awesome. I've got um, one kid at home still. Right. And uh, I want a craft room plus a guest room. 
<clears throat> okay, that sounds good. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and set you up and just uh, refine your search and get, um, you know, Surprise and Peoria in there. Um, any other cities that you're interested in in that area? Um, what else is in that area? Um, well, there's Sun City and Sun City West um, or El Mirage, Youngstown. <clears throat> Those are kind of like the Northwest Valley. Waddell even, they just built the Costco over there. Um, I I don't quite qualify for Sun City because they have a 17 <laughs> year old at home still. Oh, gotcha. Okay, well, so I won't put those in there. Um, any other ones that you particularly want me to add in there? What about Waddell? Okay, I can add it, no problem. And Litchfield Park. Oh, okay. So you want to do on the Southwest. Are you interested in anything like Avenue, Goodyear, Tolleson? Um, no Tolleson. Um, Goodyear, maybe. The houses are a little pricier in Goodyear, I noticed. Um, well, you never know. I'll add it in there. But no, um, Avondale doesn't really appeal to me. Neither does Tolleson. Okay. Um, I'll just do Litchfield Park and Goodyear. Um, so let me ask you a question. Do you own a home now? Um, yes. Okay. So, um, but do you need to sell that one, uh, or do you want to keep that one and buy another one? Um, we're going to keep it as a rental. Nice. Okay. Well, I can help you set that up too. Um, all right. So, you're just going to buy another one. Um, so are you going to probably need financing? Um, yes, we're going to need financing. We're trying okay. to save up a down payment right now. All right. That sounds good. Um, so do you need any, um, help with like, well, I don't think you would, but, um, credit repair or anything like that, maybe just some strategies to get going. Um, no, I don't need that. Okay. Okay. All right, well, um, I have a couple of lenders that I work with. Do you have one that you usually use or? I didn't like, like the last one, one, so I would I would appreciate if you gave me the names of some good lenders. Okay, I'll send over, I'll send over a couple. We have actually Jake with Best Homes Real Estate. Um, he works with uh, our team and our company um, a lot, so he's really good. So you, I'll, I'll him, include him in there too. Okay. Um, you can call that sounds awesome. All right. So um, do you have any other questions? Um, no. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'll follow up with you and um, yeah, just, uh, you know, I'll give you my contact information. I'll send it on over to you. And um, if you want to see anything, let me know. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, have a great day. Thanks. You too. All right. So Angela. Yeah. What are your thoughts? How did you do? I don't know. Like, we were just playing. No. Okay. Kelly, what are your, what are your thoughts about Angela's performance? Um, I, I, I think she did okay. She asked the right questions, but uh, to wrap up, I think we should have met I think we should have met to go over my goals. You mean uh, she um, set an appointment or something to to meet? So. Okay. Yep. Yeah, but everything else I thought went well. She she hit the the marks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think? I think that her approach was um her questions were good she answered the questions however uh angela if you if you come up against somebody who who is a little bit more cutthroat or um doesn't have much time they're gonna cut you off you gotta kind of lead the conversation with more authority and uh i feel like your approach was a little bit um was a little bit weak in the sense that someone could maybe bulldog you and uh, take over the conversation. Okay. So maybe focus on. You mean um, you mean you mean she 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 has to be a little bit more uh, 
more assertive. More right. Confident. A little increase of assertion will kind of, um, kind of bring that authority and help them along. Okay. Uh, all right. That's... Well, I'll try to figure out what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I wish I was more. Uh, I know it's hard to understand what you mean, but okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, right. I, I think what, what he's trying to get at is maybe, um, like, like Kelly said, the questions were right. She hit the points, you know, obviously the last day, you know, set the appointment was probably, you know, lacking a little bit, but I think Angela, all it really comes down to, I think it's just a little bit more of a downswing when you ask your questions. Like he said, I think when you downswing a question, it sounds just a little bit more like you're sure of that's what you want to know. You know what I mean? And then uh, maybe don't, just ask what you ask and maybe don't leave it open because I had the same problem. I would ask what I wanted to ask and then give them another option like, or is this what you want to do? Or, you know, is, you know, does that not really sound good for you? And then I noticed, like he said, you know, they would, they would take over the conversation from there. Um, but yeah, maybe I think just a little, a little downswing adjustment to the tonality, I think would, would go a long way with the exact same questions <laughs> that you asked. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that clarifying. That was good. I'll try to pay attention to your announcing and your question <laughs> and see how you're, what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean that, and that's what, that's what we're doing, what we're doing. Right. I mean, so paying attention to the ones, the tonality is very important. It's, a lot of times it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Right. And some of the questions may come off uh, somewhat. Um, um, and I don't know if I'm using the right word, uh, you know, kind of almost kind of like timid that you're not sure, you know, if that's the question you should be asking in the first place, you know, so, you know, like for example, you, you asked a question about um, if they have a house to, uh, to sell or they, they're currently renting and Kelly said, oh no, we're planning to rent it. And, um, um, and you're like, yeah, we can set you up with that too. W what exactly does that mean? You're gonna set you up with that too. You know, like, so, so if you're gonna ask the question and they give you an answer, well, uh, provide them with, um, with a, with a solution, right? That you can help them to find a tenant. You can help them to, to rent their place and get a top dollar. You can help them to maybe uh, get the tenant pre-qualified to make sure the tenant doesn't have any red flags, right? Bring value to that conversation. Okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah, as, as, as yeah. far as the tonality goes, Angela, cause you said you kind of wanted to hear what that sounded like. It's like when you said, uh, Oh, I saw that you were looking surprised, you know, is that the area you want to be in? If I were to ask that like upswing, you know, I'll say, so I saw you were looking in surprise. Is, is that where you want to be? You know, that doesn't sound that sure. Now, if you say, Hey, I saw you were looking in surprise. Is that where you want to be? And be very assertive and be very, you know, don't let your, your, because sometimes when we're uncertain, we let our voice kind of go high a little bit. I don't know if you ever noticed that when you're confused or when you're not sure if someone's lying to you, you kind of tend to go up. But if you swing down, when you say it, it just sounds a little bit more like, okay, that's what they want to know. You know, so if I say, you know, is that where you want to be? Or is that where you want to be? They're going to hear that difference on the phone. I don't know if you hear that difference or not. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody talks different. And I don't know, it sounds monotone to me. And not happy or something. I don't know. No, I never really thought about it. I think I'm gonna have to give this some thought. Well, <laughs> I mean, it, it's the, the good thing is all of these sessions are recorded and they're all available, so you can always listen to yourself, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, so, but again, it, we're we're just getting to the point where we're kind of like, you know, getting getting better, right? And by the, I'm telling you, by the end of this uh mentorship uh group that we're gonna i mean you guys are like gonna be like like superstar when it comes to this i mean i i know that for a fact you're already doing really good um you know um angela you did really good parker you did really good so this is just the beginning stage and i like the fact that we're all sharing and 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 and, and you know offering our suggestions right that's that's what this is all about at the end of the day this is this is a mastermind right and this is a, a group we hold each other accountable and we, we get better and we're going to get better. So let's continue guys. I got to actually, I got to run. I got a nine 30 meeting, but I know Alberto is going to be here uh, with you guys for hopefully another five or 10 minutes. And then um, we're going to reconvene. We're going to go back again to it on Wednesday. All right, guys. Okay. Um, 
I'll, I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you later. Thanks. All right. All right. Alberto, take it away. All right, guys. So we got Angela who went. Um, we got Parker who went. Who's next in line? Anybody want to give it a shot? You know, don't be shy, guys. Don't be timid. I mean, you know, again, this is just for us to get better. I know. Uh, and the good thing is, as soon, hopefully when we're done with this, you guys will hit the phones as soon as we're done. And you kind of, you know, got, you know, into the rhythm. You got almost warmed up almost, you know, that yeah. little jog before a workout. So that's the whole point of this, you know. So Parker and Angela, you guys did awesome. Um, and yeah, guys, so please don't be shy. You know, obviously, anytime that we hang up the phone, we immediately start thinking, you know what? I should have said that differently. I should have right. asked that differently. When they right. gave me that info, I probably should have followed up. So that's all this is. This isn't to critique you guys. This isn't to, this is literally to help each other out and see if maybe we spot differences that we do in our calls in somebody else. Because sometimes it's a little bit harder to critique ourselves from the outside in than it is maybe to say, oh, hey, you know what? He just did that and I did that. You know, maybe I should, I should focus on that. So uh, who do we have next? Gosh, let's go. I'll be by right. Adrian. Love it. Love the energy. Let's do it, guys. Adrian, you want to be a buyer or you want to be agent? I'm a buyer. Okay. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. <laughs> Hello? Hey, is this Adrian? Yeah, it is. Who's this? Hey, Adrian. My name is Joshua Mivas. I'm with Best Homes Real Estate. Uh, I just wanted to call and say thank you so much for logging on to valleyhomesearch.com. Brother, I see you're on there looking at properties. Uh, oh, is that you? Is that your website? Yeah, I noticed you logged on, man. Uh, okay. Are you looking in Phoenix? Yep, I'm looking all over Phoenix, looking for a great deal. Excellent. Are you an investor? No, I'm looking just okay. for myself. Okay, excellent. Well, uh, we got a lot of space in Phoenix. It's a big city, metropolitan area. Is there a city that you're looking at more specifically? Um, I'm interested in the East Valley. East Valley, okay. Yep. But I, current, I currently live in the I want to move to the East Valley. Okay, cool. All those cities nestled up in those mountains can be so beautiful, man. Um, so the price points can be a little bit higher over there. Uh, what kind of price point are you working with? Um, I'm hoping to fall into somewhere 500 to 700, let's say. Okay. And in that area, we can span... Um, five to seven in Scottsdale is a little bit harder to come by. You're going to look at, um, typically smaller properties, maybe around three bedroom, four bedroom to two or three baths. Is that the size you're looking for? I need a four bedroom. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so what about amenities? Are you looking to be close to mountains? Are you looking for kind of a cul-de-sac property? Talk about your, uh, What's your, what's your goal here? What's your preferred property? Oh, um, well, I haven't thought it through to that degree yet. Um, I've kind of just started looking. Okay, cool. You got little kids? Yeah, I got a couple. Okay. Are they um, elementary school age? Are they closer to adults? Uh, I have one in elementary and one in high school. Okay. All right, so I'm, I'm hearing that you need a slightly larger home. You're looking for five to seven. You uh, need to be close to an elementary school. All that ringing a bell? Yeah, that sounds like things I need, yep. Okay, cool. You know, there's a lot of really great communities. Um, I'd set you up in Scottsdale, around Scottsdale Road, and a, like Sweetwater area. There's a lot of great um, uh mid-sized homes in that price point uh, does that sound like the area you want to be in no i hate scottsdale i will never live in scottsdale um i'm thinking more in terms of chandler or uh somewhere down oh, okay. south <laughs> okay cool hey to each their own i totally get it we can definitely work in um chandler mesa tempe area does that sound better yeah i think so excellent okay well, see, this is all good inf information to know. Um, all right, great. Well, what's your time frame? You looking? You said six months. No, I I just started looking, and so I I'm probably I'm be six to twelve months out. 
That's okay. what I'm thinking right now. Okay. Are you a first time home buyer? No, I have a home. Okay, cool. Um, are you, so, so are you looking to move and sell the home you're currently living in to purchase this new one? No, I'm going to rent my house out because I think there's a lot of opportunity there. So I'm going to rent my house in the West and move to the East. That's a great idea. You know, inventory is so low here in the Valley and people are moving here. Um, having a rental property is an excellent idea. I think that's a good uh, cash flow opportunity for you. So um, in the event that you uh, aren't going to sell, I'm thinking you might, finance the property you're going into is that right yeah i'll be financing have you talked to a lender yet no no like i said i just kind of i'm just beginning starting to feel like this is my plan next year okay very good well hey look um typically when i serve people in your scenario where they're gonna um, buy a second home it's really important to have you talk to a lender first so that you know where you stand financially and then that gives us a good blueprint about how we can go about finding the perfect property for you the last thing i want to do is put you in the situation where you could be financially uncomfortable so i want to provide that service to you is that okay i got several people you could talk to um yeah that sounds like what i need to do okay cool excellent well tell you what you sound like you've got a good idea about what you need to do. I wouldn't mind meeting with you and uh, either in person or in Zoom with that lender. And we can go over the details a little, more, a little bit more specifically. Does that sound good to you? I'm going to talk to my wife and I'll let her know that uh, you and I talked first and see where it takes me. Okay. Well, what do you need to talk to your wife about? about you, about your website, and um, make sure that her and I are on the same page as we move forward. So okay. I don't know, like, I think she's probably been talking to some real estate agents. Well, I'm not sure, you know, that move forward right now. Okay. I wonder what I could do for you to make you feel confident in me. Is there anything you're looking for specifically in an agent that would make you feel like this guy is out to help us? I would love well, to be that agent. I don't know the answer, but I've heard it's really hard to buy a house now. So I've got a lot of friends that want to buy houses and they're not able to close deals. Right. You're worried about not being able to find the deal for you. So, you know, that sounds like the most important thing is a, got to be able to you know close a deal well i can tell you this much me personally i have relationships with many different agents and when we get into a situation where what we're finding on the mls isn't serving us we have to dig into our own personal uh, relationships with other agents to find properties that aren't listed on the mls many many of these properties are uh just uh right before they go on the mls uh, and uh, they've got these little, they're called pocket listings. And so we can, we can communicate with our, our fellow agents and network and see if we can find something for you that's not on the search. I've done that several times in the past and I've had a lot of success with it. Got a lot of well, close buddies That's here. interesting. Yeah. I like that. I like, I need someone creative. So that's what I'm looking for. Someone that's hungry. You know, and I, I'm here for you as fiduciary in the real estate business, we, we have a duty to serve you guys. And it, it would be a pleasure if I could uh, do some legwork for you. That's what, that's what I'm here for. As a realtor, that's, that's what we do. I'd love to be your agent. Can I be your agent? Uh, well, just hold off. I need to talk to my wife, Josh. I really got to well, do her, that. Well, so. let her know that I'm here for you and that I, I'd love to work with you. And uh, if I may, that'd be a pleasure. So, all right. That sounds good. Thanks for your Great. time. Absolutely. I don't want to take too much of it. I'll, uh, I'll uh, keep an email thread going with you. You can contact me and give me a call anytime. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.
Okay, that was pretty good. That was pretty good, guys. How, how did you feel about that, Joshua? Um, felt pretty good. He didn't have any objections, really, except for the wife uh -huh. talking about his wife. Okay. Yeah, I think you. I think you reacted pretty well. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I felt. Uh, well, what I about felt, the rest of the team? Go ahead. I, I, I said I, I felt confident with him by the end. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Made you feel comfortable, confident. And that's really good. We definitely want to go ahead and implement that in, in all of our clients' minds when we talk to them. Um, somebody else was going to, was going to give us their yeah, opinion. Was I, I was catch. Um, the, the part where he brought his wife into it, I think mm -hmm. that could have been a great um, intro to like get a meeting with them. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, that's good. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, uh, like, okay, well maybe we should meet. And yeah. I could, you know. Or Zoom or me, yeah. Well, I offered that, and he just continued to with the objection. So, um, should I have hammered that more? Should you can't insist on someone meet with you, you know? No, you can't. But what you can do is you can plant that seed. So you could say something like, "Hey, you know what? I get it. You you have to talk to your wife. Hey, trust me, I completely get it. You know, Joshua, are you married? I forget. Yeah. Okay, so you can say, hey, I'm married, so trust me, I completely get it. I wouldn't make a purchase like that without talking to my wife first, you know, or make a little joke without checking in with the chief first. Right. Um, so, you know, go ahead and talk to her. When are you going to see her? When do you think you're going to talk to her? Oh, I'm not going to talk to her to later tonight, maybe this weekend, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. So definitely completely get it. Like I said, go ahead and, you know, talk to her. I'm going to send you some info based on what you told me. I'm going to send you some homes. Is there anything that she's specifically looking for? Try to figure out a little bit more what she's looking for because, you know, every now and again, she's usually going to have a little bit better of an idea than we are. You know, as long as we got somewhere to sleep and, and eat, we're good to go. You know, <laughs> yeah, they got a little bit more requirements than we do. And, you know, and that's a good thing. <laughs> um, yep. So, yeah. So just ask them a little bit more about when you do talk to them, when would be a good time for me to follow up or what can I send you for you to show your wife? What information right. can I provide? Does she want to see right. houses? Because she's probably looking on her phone right now. Or would you like me to send you, like you said, some financial uh, information? Because that was great as far as, as uh, when you followed up with the financial thing. He said, hey, you know what? I'm still this far out. You were able to uh, show him why it was important to talk to a lender even before, you know, he's immediately ready to go. So that would be a similar kind of approach you would take with the wife thing. Even though you have to wait for him to talk to his wife, you can still follow up with more questions about what his wife likes, what his wife thinks, and may, maybe possibly offer information that he didn't think about. What's your name? You know, what's but... your contact exactly. info? <laughs> yeah. And then okay. be like, hey, once you talk to her, when would be a good time for us you know, to do a little video conference call so I can answer your questions as well? And then try to determine when they're both off. You know, because obviously not only will that set up this appointment of the buyer's consultation or whatever, but also will help you uh, in the future when it's time to actually go shopping. Chances are that's going to be their days off as well as far as showing goes. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, so no, focus on making the appointment. Okay. Exactly, yeah, because that's the point of these calls. Remember, guys, we want to get all this info, and you guys are phenomenal with getting the info. But I think sometimes once we get all the info that we want as far as for our notes, for sync, for that follow-up game, we forget that set that appointment, you know, because, hey, he's six months out. He's a year out. He's whatever, you know, so I can just I can just wait. But if you set that appointment now, even if he is really a year out, he's going to remember you. He's the first – you're the first agent that they saw, that they literally saw and got to have a face-to-face -face conversation and have their questions answered. So you build that rapport with them, that familiarity with them right off the back. Meanwhile, the other agents, the agents that aren't the best agents – you know, because they don't have this trading, they're just okay with what are you looking for? How many bedrooms? How many sites? The price? Your email? Okay, I'll email you, and then they just hang up. You know, yeah, they I really want to create like a personal relationship. Uh, exactly. And kind of make them feel like, like I really am fiduciary. I really care about what you exactly, want. exactly. Yeah, and then that way, when you call a week from now, a month from now, three months from now, hey, yeah, Joshua, I remember you. How you doing? You know, and then yeah. right, he remembers you. You know, it might take him a little bit longer, but he will eventually remember. Yeah, I talked to you. I talked to you on the phone. I did a video chat. You talked to my wife. It builds familiarity. It just makes that follow-up game a lot, lot easier. Trust me, guys. Yeah. The, the other thing I wanted to point out, and Joshua, I don't know if this is just because the natural way that you talk. Um, how many of you guys are familiar with Chris Voss? Nope. The FBI agent who was like a negotiator with the Black Swan Group made a, a book called Never Split the Difference. It's a phenomenal book. It's a phenomenal training course on negotiation skills. It was an FBI negotiator uh, that dealt with hostage rescue and stuff like that. 
Um, if you guys get a chance, definitely, you know, maybe watch a couple of his YouTube videos. But he talks about one specific thing, and I think it's chapter two or three of his book. He calls it the late night FM DJ voice. And that's basically, it's like a late night FM, you know, DJ radio show. You talk in a low tone voice, you talk slow, soothing, calming, and you take your time. You know, and again, Joshua, I've talked to you before. I don't know if that's just the way you talk, because even when we're just having a conversation, you're kind of a little bit slower paced than most people. Like me, for instance, I'll just talk my, you know, my, my lips off, you know, until I'm sore. But I will always try to remember, okay, slow yourself down. Give them time to think about the question, you know, let that question kind of simmer in their mind and let them, you know, take, you know, take away the answer from there. Because sometimes we're like, you know, especially if we're getting a hold of people and we're going through these calls, we're just, you know, speeding through the calls. We're not building rapport. So I think Joshua would, how Joshua's approach was definitely a lot more calmer and gave them, like he said, he felt more comfortable. He felt more confident to give them those answers by the end of the conversation. Because Joshua was able to downswing his questions, be assertive about his questions, but also he didn't rush an answer. He let him kind of, he sit back, waited, and let Adrian get through his answer, and then he moved on to the next one. So even though Adrian was, was kind of in control of what the response was, Joshua was kind of searing the direction and also the pace of the conversation, making it feel very natural, making it feel just like a regular conversation on the phone, you know, and that's, and that's what we want. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out real quick, Joshua, that I thought was awesome was that you went, when you noticed that you missed something, you didn't hastily go back and started asking about that. And the only reason I could notice that you noticed is because I saw it in your face. You're like, wait a minute. But you kept talking with that same tonality. You didn't say, oh, wait, hold on. Uh, you know, what about the bank? What about this? No, you let him get through his answer, kept going through that part of the conversation and then went back to, okay, so, you know, do you need to whatever the point was and then it was very very free-flowing so definitely you know like we said before the lp mama script any of these scripts it's not set in stone you don't have to do it step by step the way we write it out it's set so that way when we say internalize it like joshua just did if you miss a point you can always go back you know and it's not since it's internalized it doesn't feel unnatural you can still make it feel smooth you could still get all your points across and not make it feel forced and not make it feel scripted or almost robotic thanks buddy awesome absolutely absolutely Good job. anybody have criticism <laughs> i think it's pretty much already been hit on the only thing i was going to say was at the very end um after he said, you know, I've really got to talk to my wife about this is leading in with, well, how about I follow up with you? And let's say two days, that'll give you a chance to talk to your wife. And, you know, if she wants to be on the next call, I'd love to meet her, love to have that opportunity to display what I can do for you guys to both yeah. of you instead of just to one of you. Yeah. Yeah. That would, that would have been good. That's already been hit by like three people. So I just, okay, cool. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks guys. I got some feedback. So I think he came out very genuine and caring. Um, I like the fact that he repeated the things that were important to him, the price point and, you know, requirements in the house. I think that was great. Thanks, Martha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely agree. Definitely agree. Anybody else? Any, any key takeaways, not just from Josh's conversation, but from Parker's or Angela's or just afterthoughts that, that you guys thought would be important for the group? Maybe some common thing that you ran into that you kind of just noticed right now during the call? Um, I don't know if I would necessarily go so hard with I'd like to be your agent. Okay. How come? Well, I don't I don't beg for relationships really. Like with friends or anything like that's just to me like I don't know. Well, well, I mean, it wasn't really begging. It's more like trying to close that, you know, that exclusivity relationship. But I, I, I can kind of see what you mean. But it's kind of like a anyone... hard. Like a, it's a hard ask. Mm -hmm. um, did anyone you know... else feel that way? I did at first, but then I was thinking about it, and that was the approach that he wanted to take. He just let the person know, like, I want to be your agent. I want to represent you. So at first, I was kind of taken off by it. I would say. I would say with what with what I said that I said I need someone hungry. Josh really needed to say that in, in that moment. 
So I agree. It showed that he was hungry and he wanted it. So it was kind of I thought it was a positive. Maybe not in every conversation thing, but in this one, yeah, yeah I, I think it balanced. And you never know what you will get if you don't ask. You right. you you know, at least put it on the table to say, I want to be your agent. I'm not I'm not calling you because I might want to be your agent. I want to be your agent. <laughs> I'm, right, you know, exactly. I'm a real estate agent because I want to sell a house to you. I want to help you. Mm -hmm. It's not wishy-washy. I want it. I'm here. I'm making phone calls. I'm in a mastermind. Let's do it. Right. You know? right. And, and I think that's really a judgment call based on how you kind of feel yeah. the conversation going, how comfortable they feel. But yeah, in some situations, like Angela said, that might be a little too hard right off the back. You know, I've had that 100% yeah. where they just don't want to give you anything. They don't want to commit to you. So yeah, I, I get how in, in, in some <laughs> scenarios that just might be a little, a little too much, but in this, like I said, in this scenario, it felt pretty comfortable. He was kind of showing, you know, like Adrian said, you know, he, he wants somebody who's hungry. So, you know, maybe that would be a good indicator of maybe, you know, they want me to show some aggressiveness, you know, cause that's what they want in a client or in a, in an agent to represent them. Um, but absolutely great points from all of you guys. Um, any key takeaways from any of this? Any objections that you guys hear a lot that you were, that you were, um, you know, think, Hey, you know what? I bumped into that this week, or, you know what, this is an objection. I didn't hear that. I really wanted to see how the team would react. I keep hearing a lot of, um, I, I want a great deal. I want a foreclosure. I want something that, uh, um, you know, someone needs out of really quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Or I want to flip houses. You know, I hear, I hear that an awful lot. I'm looking okay. for a foreclosure because I want to stay under 200,000. And we right. all know that that's, that's a hard. tough price point. Right exactly. Now. Exactly. Exactly. So, so what I like to do, or does anybody want to tackle that on first before I give my input? Yeah, I'll, I could put a little input. So okay. Okay. Um, maybe let them know that you have other agents that you work with and that we can get off market deals. Um, a lot of times that's going to be a good solution. They're going to find confidence in that. Yeah. Um, Cause you're willing to go outside of the norm or what's mm -hmm. easy to serve them and to get them a deal. Cause that kind of deal, like, let's face it, it's going to be, it's got to be somebody desperate. It's got to be somebody, you know, it's a special, it's a special seller. It's got a property like that. That's not just going to throw it up on the market. It's got to be something like treasure. It's not going to be laying around, <laughs> you know, you got to dig for it and letting your client know that you're willing to dig for it is going to give them the confidence. Uh, to, to okay. trust you. Anybody else? Okay, but so yeah, so I mean, I, I definitely I, I think that's something we hear all the time. Nobody wants to overpay for a house. We all want a good deal. I mean, even us as agents, we know, you know, when it's a good deal and when it's not. Um, but I think being very upfront and very honest with our online buyers about what the market's doing um not only builds that trust that relationship but more importantly it builds their confidence in you as in hey this guy actually knows what he's talking about so what i like to do when i hear people hey i want a good deal i want to make sure you know if it's a foreclosure that'd be great i'm up front with them i'm like hey you know what i completely get that i was the same way when i bought my house last year you know but here's kind of what i found out in the market so you know, going back to, you know, a year ago, we had X amount of properties on the market, you know, there would be on average X amount of days on the market, you know, fast forward to now, with everything that has happened in the year, we are now less than does anyone know what the number is today? Is it is it are we over 5000? Are we under 5000? I don't know, it's been floating there. Yeah, so, so we can say, you know, up here. <laughs> right, exactly, you know, but again, if you know your numbers in your area, you can speak on those numbers on those facts and say, hey, look, you know what, here, you know, compared to 12 months from now, we're at a fraction of what we had, you know, we're at less than 5,000 properties for sale here on the market. So, you know, and the demand keeps going up. So, you know, when I email you these homes, and I, and I tell them this too, when I email you these homes, there's a good chance if it's priced correctly with the market that we're in, 
you're only going to see it for a few days. Once it hits the weekend, it's probably going to be under contract. Once it hits two weeks, it's probably going to be under contract. Again, set that expectation of what the market is currently doing. Um, Because not only will that make them maybe, hey, you know, maybe I should talk to a lender. Maybe I should be a little bit more serious and more aggressive about this. Because we know our buyers right now have to be aggressive. We know that. We know they have to be aggressive. And we want to make sure that, that they know that we're not just trying to close them on anything, that that's just the way the market is. Um, but definitely speak on what the numbers are, on what they were, how long they're selling or how long they're staying on the market. Um, and again, that's going to that's gonna be able to build your reliability as a seasoned agent with experience in the market that they're looking in. You know, so if you guys don't know those numbers, I strongly recommend that you go out and you definitely look at them at least once a month. So that way, you know, okay, there's less than 5,000 properties for sale January 2020 you know, or January, 2021, January, 2020. Uh, it, however, a year ago, we were at what, 14, 16,000, something like that in the beginning of the year. And then by like April, May, when the pandemic hit, you know, we went back up from like 12 to 14. But then after that, we started going back down again, we went from 14 to below 10 to below eight to below seven. And we were all freaking out at seven. I'm like, dang, we've never seen it this low. And now fast forward to this morning, we're about 5,000 properties in Maricopa County. You know, and usually when I tell people about that and I give them that timeline, it shows them not like, oh, wow, really? Wow, I didn't know it was that the inventory was that low. And now it's no longer what they think, what they want. Now they know this is what the market's doing. And then you can, and that, that also makes it easier for when they're saying, hey, I'm looking for this size, this price point, this location. And you know, that's a little hard right now. You know, it's a little bit harder to get something bigger in the East Valley under X amount of dollars you know, and say, hey, look, let me see what I can show you. But like I said, markets, you know, inventory is a little low, markets a little competitive. I'll see what I can uh, find. I'll show it to you. But let me also show you some other options as well in case we can't find what you're looking for. Again, it's all about setting the expectations, not only uh, as far as your reliability, as far as your knowledge, but your follow-up game. Why is this guy might potentially send me something outside of the area that I had mentioned to them? Well, because of the, uh, because of the low inventory, and now I know. Um, but does that answer your question, Kelly? Like, have you ever tried that approach? Just kind of giving them a, a timeline of what the market's been doing um, and, you know, what to realistically expect. Because we all know, I mean, we're going to see foreclosures, but the banks aren't going to give them away the way they were, you know, 10 years ago. Right, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. I had to, um, I talked to a guy yesterday who said, it seems like, <laughs> he told me the exact opposite of what's going on right now. He goes, it seems like nothing's selling. And I said, are you kidding me? I said, <laughs> so, so, um, you know, I kind of educated him on what's going on right now that homes are not mm. on the market uh, for very long. And uh, he said, well, yeah, but I'm looking in Sun City. I said, even in Sun City, houses are going very quickly. You're always going to have turnover in Sun City because it's an older population. They pass away. They sell, you know, kids end up selling the home so you're always going to mm -hmm. have that but even though uh it's very competitive uh mm -hmm. when you're selling one of them and or when you're buying one right so he he said really because that's what it looks like is going on and i said well you know uh it's on the market for more than a week yeah sun city may be a little bit longer because you know because the popular or the uh restrictions in the community as far as age go uh, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh you know so you will see those houses on the market just a little bit longer because they're not available right. to everyone right so and then no, yeah, I, absolutely i educated him a little bit on you know the fees of sun city and the amenities in sun city and things like that but he's coming from florida so right gotcha you know. gotcha yeah yeah no definitely definitely and I, I think i think those are all great points um so what, what i want you guys to do is think of any other objections or you know bef between now and our next call any objections you get any any you know curveballs that they throw at you that stump you write them down and let's go over them on the next call you know really think about the ones that you really okay. wish you would have gone over write them down, email them to me, text them to me, or I'll text you guys later today, later tomorrow. So that way I can make a list of the objection handlers that me or Alan would use uh, in that scenario. So try to think of the hardest ones, the most common ones that really stump you guys. And then we'll try to work on that together in our next appointment.
All right. So you guys did great. Thank you guys for participating. All of you guys did amazing. Um, whether you, you role played or gave some feedback, thank you guys. It's what it's all about. If you had any other suggestions for the next call, any other feedback for me, Alan, on the next call, email that to us as well. And uh, we'll make sure to address it on the next, on the, on the following calls. All right, guys. Cool. Thanks guys. Thanks. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. You, you guys are great. Thank let's you. Let's get on the phones and let's set some appointments. Sounds good.